Welcome to Tech Brothers with Damit. Today we are going to answer this question and perform a demo. How to drop or delete all triggers from database in SQL Server. So let's go to SQL Server and by using a SQL Server management tool and connect to the SQL Server. Right now I'm in a database called Sales. Uh, you can open a new query or use the same query. To find uh, the triggers in this uh, database on different tables, you can use one of the system view called sys.triggers. And uh, this will give us uh, all the triggers what we have in the database. Now the second part is uh, how to drop them. To drop the trigger, we need to use uh, drop trigger and then we have to provide uh, the trigger name. So let's say if I will provide this uh, trigger name, it is going to drop the, this uh, trigger. Let's run this one and see it, if it works. So this works. Uh, now if uh, we run this statement again and now we have only one trigger. So let's drop this one as well. Uh, I have the script ready. We, I can recreate these triggers again to show you. So let's drop this one. So right now we do not have any trigger. Come to this uh, window. I have these two insert uh, uh, after insert triggers. I'm going to create that. So the triggers are created back. Now we can see the triggers again. But think about that, if you have maybe 100 triggers and you want to drop all of them, you will not be using a drop trigger and um, then trigger name one after one. So you can prepare your drop statement from this table. Let's uh, prepare our drop statement. So we'll copy this one here. And then here what we say, we can use drop trigger and then only need we need to concatenate is uh, our trigger name so that's the name let's run this one this statement and we see that the statements are prepared so copy this statement run this one and paste it here and drop all of the triggers so this is a quick way if you go back and check if the triggers are there they would be gone so we don't have those triggers anymore let me recreate the triggers one more time and show you another way so right now what i have here i have created a cursor that can drop any any trigger in the database so you just give the database name what it is going to do it is going to declare a cursor uh, first of all we will be declaring a trigger name that's the uh, the variable where we will save the trigger name then the next part is we are declaring a cursor so we are using this query to get the names of those triggers so there will be cursor will be saving that in the memory and then we will open that cursor and then we will fetch one record at a time so we are fetching uh, um, the trigger name in the trigger name variable and then uh, fetch at the rate at the rate fetch status is equal to zero it is going to keep running till there is there are records in the trigger uh, drop trigger cursor so once they are zero it's not going to run anymore so next part is i'm preparing my sql so i declared the sql worker max is equal to null so I, I i i set this value to null for now so i can set in the next one so every iteration it will be set to null first and then it will be set to the real statement in the next one i'm setting this one to drop trigger and then using that trigger name variable that i i fetch the value from the cursor on each iteration and then i'm printing uh, okay, this trigger is uh, going to be dropped or dropped successfully and then I'm executing it. So I could have execute uh, on top uh, and then print that because that, that's the right thing to do. So I can put it here and then I'm printing my SQL so that I should be printing uh, right here as well when I'm setting it. So I should print it here and then uh, execute it and then I should uh, um, print this message and then next uh, I'm fetching the record or the trigger name again to the variable so it's gonna go and loop through again one more time and run the uh, statement drop trigger and use the name of the trigger and then the, at the end I'm closing the cursor and then I'm deallocating the cursor so it, it will release the memory to the system so this is uh, this script can be used you don't have to build your uh, queries all the time so once you have this script uh, you can use this script uh, 
just by changing the database name. So you don't have to uh, build it and copy it and paste it and run it. So let me, let's go back here and what we see here, we have two triggers. So if we run from the cursor here as well, we will be getting two records. So these are the two uh, triggers we have. And if I will run it, uh, this is how it's going to work. So let me, um, comment out uh, execute part so i'm not executing right now i'm just printing my um, sql statement and just the message this is the way to go i i uh, disable my execute first run it one time and make sure it is uh, returning me the correct information so, and then i will enable that part so i have drop trigger trigger name then it say okay it is successfully dropped even it is not dropped because i haven't uh, executed the statement and then uh, it is bringing the next one so it is showing me the sequence is correct everything looks good now i can enable that uh, execute sql that's going to execute the this statement drop trigger and uh, drop the triggers so the same message we got here and now if we go back uh, and check our this is the triggers table view we will not get any information so that's how you can drop your triggers one way build your sql statement by using this system uh, views and the other part is use the cursor to loop through those uh, trigger names and drop them one by one so thanks very much for watching this video i will put the script uh, in the uh, description as well as i will have uh, this uh, uh, script on the blog so you can copy from there see you in the next video